The Bible says that, and Jesus entered into his rest. Are you hearing me? Jesus entered into his rest. The Bible says, labor to enter into your rest. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. As we step into this new week, we enter into rest. We enter into financial rest. For those that wanted to marry, went on to marital rest. We are entering to health rest. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lift up your hands towards heaven and pray. I enter into rest in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I agree with you today that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are entering to your rest. Amen. We believe that as the word of God comes this morning, it's to come with fresh revelation. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. can have your seats. And just before you have your seats, I have this testimony I want to share with you. Just in case you do not know, December the 1st to the 3rd, notice it. December the 3rd to the 1st, you've seen the video, you've seen the announcement. You know, we have a very special time of fasting and praying. Two testimonies I want to share with you. This person says, I brought two car keys during the, during the last fasting and praying. One for my house and one for my car. My car has been bad for some time. I didn't have any money to fix it. So yeah, I've been laying down there at the mechanic workshop. My mechanic told me I had to sell to get another one. And it was due for change. I cried to God because I didn't even have money to fix it. He said, while I was praying for a Tokubo car. In fact, even a Nigerian used car. After the prayer, I continued my hustle. Long and short of the story, I got a brand new car. It says, as a tear robber on Friday, he said, the nylon is still on it. Just to remind me what God cannot do. He said, I also got $100,000 for my business. That's the power of God. So, this next seven is big because every day we have several thousands, literally 10 to 15,000 sometimes, that will join in the prayer just from where they are. All across the world, Australia, Canada, Nigeria, Port Harcourt, you know, Uganda, Kenya, they will just join in. We had this testimony from Houston, and this baby was, um, what, this lady was pregnant, and the baby they went for a scan in Houston. We know whether we know that the medical facility is top notch, and they noticed that the baby was not growing well. It had no toes, it had no, it no, no, no fingers. They came to the next level prayer, and we began to pray. They went in a few weeks after, and guess what? The toes and the fingers had appeared. There's another testimony that will come up on the screen right now. And there's a testimony of um, someone that had a terrible skin condition. Terrible skin condition. That defied medical solution. As we prayed, guess what? It cleared off by the power of God. During this December, the 1st and the 3rd, come with expectation. You're single, you want to get married. You have a challenge with your job. You want to progress. You want to see rapid growth. Come. As we pray, the power of God will touch you. But don't only come, invite your family and friends. Everybody can come. Because the yoke will be destroyed by the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And remember that after this teaching, we will, what they call it, we would have the kids' church on YouTube. Uh, you know, the times are up. And also, if you want to give your offerings, this is a good time to go ahead and do that as we step into the, uh, into the teaching today. So today, I want to talk to you about living without regret. Living without regret. You know, in the book of Daniel, you know, this is one of the most, um, Daniel chapter 5, it's one of the biggest chapters that I read with a lot of caution. And it's, it's a story of the son of, it's a son of, um, the, son, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. And Belshazzar was drinking and was partying one day, and all of a sudden he told them to bring all the sacred utensils of the temple of the living God. That he wanted to drink all the things that were meant for God. And as he was drinking, the Bible says, a hand appeared from nowhere. And they appeared, the hand appeared and wrote on the wall. And Belshazzar was confused. There was one moment where there was a lot of joy. And that moment, a lot of confusion. And all of a sudden, what was written, nobody could understand it. Because when God writes something, you need someone that knows God to interpret it. And they sent for Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 5, this is what verse 24 says. You can read the whole story for yourself. And this is the handwriting that was written. Mene, mene, take an upstring. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered the kingdom as finished it. Ah! Just imagine the message. Mene, God says, I've numbered your kingdom. I've numbered your days. I've numbered your prosperity. And it has come to an end. Ah! 
Look at the next verse, verse 27. The verse is stronger. He said, take hell. What does take hell mean? He says, thou art weighed in the balances and you are found wanting. What is the balance? You remember those things that the judges have as a symbol that is like this? God says, I put you on the balance and you are this way. You know why I'm saying this today? Because when we say live it without regrets, some people look back and say, well, I don't have a child and they have a huge regret. Some people say, I didn't make a lot of money and they have a huge regret. Some people say, as I look at the end of the year, I, I didn't achieve this, I didn't achieve that, and they have huge regret. But the question is this, uh, is that the way God looks at your life? Most people measure their life differently from God, how God measures their life. Most people measure their life differently from how, how God measures their life. They are measuring their life and they say, oh, I have regrets. But does God think that those are regrets? And guess what about measurement? The thing that my measurement is this. Whatever measure gets done, whatever you can't measure, you cannot change or fix. So if your measurement is wrong, you can change it. If your measurement is wrong, you can fix it. And this is what God is saying. So God looked at the king and he says, you are weighed on the balance. And you are found wanting. Question, if God weighs your life in 2020, you that you think it was a great year, would God say you are doing well or you are found wanting? And I'm saying so because very often as the year is coming to an end, we need to take stock of ourselves. I wanted to think of ourselves and say, how am I leaving? But how am I leaving is not how I, I think I should be leaving. How does God see my life? In the scale of God, is God pleased with it? God measurement factor in other things that humans don't consider. God's measurement is focused on things that have eternal value. Human beings' measurement of a great life is the car you drive, the house you live in, the amount of money in your bank account, how people, how many followers you have on social media, how powerful you are in your industry, how influential you are as an entrepreneur. That's wonderful. But God's measurement is more than that. God's measurement has eternal value. God measures your life in terms of eternity, in terms of heaven, in terms of hell, in terms of the future. So when we talk about living without regrets, it's not just about the physical vision here. It's about the future. What does God have in mind for you? Glory to God. God's measurement, look at the heart. You know, a lot of people can say Jesus, but their heart is far from Jesus. God's measurement, look at the heart. And your measurement of success, the same thing that God measures. Because a lot of people will be surprised. That when God begins to analyze their life, the very things they are proud of will be things that they will regret. And as I say this today, just the king Beshazzar, he thought, he said, he thought his life was big, he was great. You know, it's like you're a millionaire in an African nation where your chorus is not strong and you go to the United States and you say, I'm a millionaire. You could be a millionaire in your country, but in another state, you may not even be a thousandaire. Because the measurement is different. In this world, people can look up to you and think you are huge and significant. But when it comes to how God looks at you, you may not be significant like that in God's kingdom. And that's very important. That you live a life without regrets. That you live a life that God can look at and is proud of you. Let's look at what the Bible says. 2 Peter, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hmm. Second Timothy. Chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 3, rather. What does the Bible say? This is what the Bible says. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. He says, And this know also that in the last days, now people always ask. Excuse me, when are the last days? Are we in the last days? Of course we're in the last days. How do I know in the last, we're in the last days? Because the last days began when Jesus Christ came. What is the last days? The last days is the last phase that will wrap up 
this time in God's calendar. Because God had the calendar. The world would all not always be like this. The, uh, the world would be different after some time. The rapture will occur. The second coming of Jesus Christ will occur. Some people will go to hell. Some people will go to heaven. All those things will happen. But all those things work with the calendar of God. Oh, wow. So I says, wow, are you talking about rapture? Exactly the thing I'm talking about today. I know it's a long time you've talked about heaven, about hell, and about rapture. But listen to me. You have to be careful because as a Christian, this world is not our home. Our home is in the future. This place is passage. And if you are so overcharged with the things that are going on here, you will forget where you're going to. So what is the last days? The last days refers to the fine is the final season of the face of the world as we know it. When did the last day start and when will it finish? I will tell you when it started. The last day started with the introduction of Jesus when he came. For 2000 years, that's been the last days. Someone says, for that long, you must remember in God's calendar, one day is like two thousand, is like a thousand years. So in God's calendar, it's just two days, no, is it? It's two thousand years. So, so how do I know that? Because in Hebrews chapter one, the Bible says. The Bible says, God in former times has spoken to us through this prophet. In these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. Meaning that Jesus is speaking to us this time is the last days. John chapter 2 says this, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So when the apostles received the Holy Ghost, that receiving the Holy Ghost was a fulfillment of prophecy that were in the last days. So ladies and gentlemen, if 2,000 years ago was the last days, what are we in right now? We are in the last moment, the last hours, the last seconds of the last days. See what, about, see what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. He says, this know also that in the last days, the first thing that will happen is this. This is the first and the last days. He said, perilous times. That's what King James calls it. Of the new translation said, difficult times to come. Wow, we're surprised at COVID. Wow, we're surprised at the, at, at the severe um, starvation going around the world. Wow, we're surprised about what's going on globally. Because the Bible already told us that in the last days, difficult times shall come. Difficult times. There's never been the time in the history of the world that this kind of things are happening has happened before. Why we're struggling with COVID, there's wildfire, there's a tsunami here. I was hearing some other countries are going through some pandemic right now about what's going on right now, earthquake. The reason why that we are in the last days, uh, we are in the last days, even the earth is groaning for redemption. We're in the last days. It's in the last days, difficult times shall come. There's a way Isaiah says it. He said, darkness shall cover the people and gross darkness the people. That's what he says. The last days is characterized with very difficult time. Look at the second sign. In 2 chapter 3 verse 2, he says, for men shall become what? Lovers of themselves. Oh my God. The second sign is this. In the last days, people are going to become self-absorbed and self-centered. That is huge. People are going to become self-absorbed and self-centered. You are going to have a generation of selfie people. They all about themselves. That's why you have selfie. It's a selfie generation. So you will hear them say things like, I'm not into that. It's how I feel. It's what I want. They don't live for God again. They don't live for purpose again. They will sit on the couch on a Sunday and say, I don't feel like going to church. You know, before people used to have an idol, they were worshipped by themselves. And it could be Zeus, it could be some other idol. But in these last days, the idol people worship is themselves. What they want, what they feel, they worship their feelings, they worship their desires, they worship their needs, they worship their wants, they literally worship themselves. They live a life that is unto themselves. That is the sign of the last days. The generation is so strong that they even call it a selfie generation. Have you not seen people? Hey, will you come to church today? I don't feel like going. Because it's about how you feel. This generation sells it to you. Once you don't enjoy it, you don't feel it, don't do it. That's, the, that's what the generation sells. But the Bible already says so. He said in the last days, he says what will happen? He said many shall become lovers of their own self. They don't live for a higher purpose. They don't live for higher meaning again. They want just to live for today. 
I've seen people that can make just a little adjustment and make their marriage work, but they're so in love with themselves, they walk out of their marriage. I've seen governors and presidents and leaders of countries that can make just adjustment and their countries will go forward, but because of themselves and their desire and greed, they will leave the country bankrupt for themselves and the family to enjoy. Recently, we had case that there were palliatives that were meant to be used for, for, for people that needed palliatives. And those palliatives were kept by some other powerful people. Because men love themselves. And I'm saying so to you today. Are, are you sure the spirit, because there is a spirit of Antichrist, which is the spirit of the last age. Are you sure it's not catching up with you? Where, where God begins to nudge you to pray and you don't want to pray because you don't feel like praying. We're having fasting and prayer. December the 1 to 3rd. And he said, I, I, I don't feel like fasting. Are you, I, are you sure that you're not going to start worshiping yourself? When the Spirit of God says, shouldn't you start typing? And he said, I don't feel like typing. And you begin to worship what you want. Listen to me. You were not made for yourself. You were made for his purpose. You were made for his pleasure. You were made for him. God was not made for you. You were made for him lovers of themselves I, I spoke to someone I said hey why are you not in church he said he said I'm just trying to get used to it again he said it's just kind of difficult now I said brother don't become a lover of self we're in the last days see what the next thing he says for men shall become lovers of themselves what's the next thing covetous what's covetous they are in they're always into money you know someone said to me one time he said i can do anything for money i said i'm sorry brother i cannot do anything for money what i do for money must be in line with my ethos you will see young ladies and young men you will see older men and older women that can do anything for money in fact they will put a lot of effort to making money i wish they can put the effort into their prayer life but what happens in the last days that's what happens that's what happens in the last days it's difficult to sit in the church for a 90 minute service but you can sit in a money meeting for six hours you don't mind oh it's the it's so hard to be consistent it's so hard to be consistent in daily morning prayer every day but you can go through the same traffic just to get to daily bread You'll find worship very boring. You'll find prayer very boring. But you can stay in front of a TV box and watch a football match for 90 minutes and vibrate and shake. But when people are praying in church and they're shaking on the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll find them crazy. But you watch football that they do not even know you. They're not even paying you for. And you vibrate that way. Because we're in the last days. People are so into themselves. People are so covetous. Oh my God. The Bible says that they will be covetous, they are boastful, proud. Have you been on social media lately? Does that word come alive? It says they are boastful, they are proud. He says they are blasphemous. There's no time ever I've seen people just talk carelessly about spiritual things that I'm seeing today. And people think that people are being set free. It's the spirit of the Antichrist in the last days prevailing upon the hearts of men. And people are becoming more blasphemous. I've learned over time, I don't talk about things I don't understand. I don't touch things as spiritual. I keep my opinion to myself. That's famous. The easiest way to get a news bug, just talk about the wrongs of the church. And the whole media goes crazy. I know the church has its flaws. I'm not going to defend what is wrong. But I'm not going to use the dirty side of the church to destroy the name of Christ. He said, it's in the last days, men are going to become blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. He says, without natural affection, truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. Fierce. People are going to become mean. You borrow someone money, they take your money away. And you're like, where is my money? Say that. How dare you ask me for it? He says, the spices of those that are good. Did you see that? See, you, you tell someone, hey, we're, we're walking in the house. We don't want to do ma sex before marriage. And they say, you don't want to do sex before marriage? Are you crazy? Everybody does it. All of a sudden, the person that stands on the word of God is crazy. And the person that doesn't stand on the word of God is right. But that's because we're in the last days. How do people wake up on a Sunday morning? You know, I was telling my, my, my friend the other day. I said, you say you can come to church, but during the protest, you went to the toll gate. Where there was hundreds of thousands of people with our face mask. I said, I said, be careful. Because gradually, 
This is what happens. The spirit of the last days creeps on people. It creeps. And I'm saying that because there are many of you that you're beginning to struggle. Your values are changing. And you don't know the values are changing because there's a subtle influence of a demonic spirit called the spirit of Antichrist altering your value because of the last days. I want to ask you a question. 2020 is here. And the year is here already. And it's almost gone. You've prayed for all these vital things like money, relationship, breakthroughs. One last to do pray for souls. One last to do pray and say, Lord, my prayer today is to fellowship with you, to know you more. My prayer today is just to spend time with you. I just want to be all that you want me to be. My plan, my plan is your plan. What is your plan for me, oh God? All I want to do in this prayer time is to lean into you. All I want to do is just to make you purify my heart, oh God. When last do you pray for people that are not born again? When last do you pray the gospel? Listen to me. Either it's COVID or not, you're still going to account to God for 2020. Because in 2020, you made money. In 2020, you grew. In 2020, you took care of your family. You made plans despite it to do the, what? How did you make plans for your ministry? Because God gave you a gift. There are many of you that are listening to me right now. There's a particular gift that God has given you. But because, because it's going to take you some sacrifice to use the gift, you rather will sit on the gift, the spirit of the last days. You hear people say, I'm too busy for that. Are you too busy for God? In the last days, the Bible says, the spices of good. The other verse says, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Isn't it amazing? Someone says, it has to be fun. Listen, sometimes it's fun. But sometimes the things that will help you grow are not fun. Like this message may not be fun, but this message will help you grow. When the last days, when the last days when people are bringing new age science and they want to mix with christianity when well, the last days where people are selective with the bible they'll say well i believe this i don't believe this listen when it comes to the bible we believe everything praise god we, we have no option because once jesus see jesus is the lord of our life if jesus is lord we are servants when we come into that relationship we're servants with him I'm not saying that, be, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm on the progression towards that high calling. That's what it is. I'm running my race. Listen, you know what I've discovered? When I got born again some years ago, a lot of us were running the race together. But as the year went forward, some people dropped off on the right. Some people dropped off on the left. The cares of life, the troubles of ministry, the need for money, the need for husband, different things dropped them off. But I said to myself, I've set my eye like a flame. I'm going forward. Let me be debt, there may be persecution, there may be oppression. I'm going forward. It's tough sometimes, but that's what it is. You know the thing? I, I don't know if you know this word. There's a word we used to use when I just got born again called persecution. Persecution is when you're falsely treated, when you're badly treated for your faith. A lot of Christians don't even live good enough to ever experience persecution. When last did you win a soul? When last did you serve? When last did you have a meaningful time of prayer? When last did you have a ministry of the Holy Ghost? When last did you think of the rapture and think of heaven and say, these are my spiritual goals because of heaven? As you think for next year, are your goals just financial and business and marriage and children? What, do you have goals when it comes to soul winning? Do you have goals when it comes to serving? Do you have aspiration? Do you have goals for things that God wants to do in your life? Because the way some people live their life is as if their life is by themselves. Let me close this morning. Second Peter chapter 3. Oh, glory to God. Oh. Lord, help me be rapture ready. Lift up your hands and say that prayer. Lord, help me be heaven ready. Help me live a life that focuses on eternity. And it, and look, focus on things that focus on eternity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Second Peter to the three. Verse 10. See what it says. Let's read from verse 9. Maybe from verse 8. He said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Because people say, but they said, Jesus has been coming for a long time. This is how they felt in the apostles' days. 
So the apostles gave them a revelation key to help them understand it. He said, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. Don't see it as a long time. Because God has another timetable. What did he say? He said, the Lord is not slow or slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish. But all to come to repentance. Oh, glory to God. In verse 10, what did he say? He said, but the day of the Lord will come. Now, now let me explain that quickly. Most of the time, when the Bible says the day of the Lord, sometimes it could be the rapture. But most of the time, the day of the Lord refers to the second coming of Christ. Because there are two different things. At the rapture, Jesus doesn't come. First Thessalonians said, Jesus will appear in the sky. And there will be the sound of a trumpet. And all of us, they will be changed. Our body, that's the last part of our redemption. Our body will be transformed. Oh, glory to God. Paul says it this way. He said, the mortal shall put on immortal. The corruptible shall put on incorruptible. In a moment of exchange, I'm cut up with the Lord forever. Praise God. What a day that shall be. Why some people are still looking here and there. Brother, we're gone. We're gone. Where? To put the Lord forever. But the second part of Lord's coming, he says, so the first one, which is rapture, it will appear in the sky. First Thessalonians says that. But at the second coming, the Bible says the Lord will discern from heaven with thousands and thousands of his saints. So the second coming is what is most often referred to as the day of the Lord, not the rapture. So sometimes people mix it up. So I'll let to say that to you. So the Bible says this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. This can't be the rapture because <laughs> we are not <laughs> one, <laughs> one, a thief in the night because people are not expecting. But guess what? We are expecting him. So he can't come to us as a thief in the night. For those not expecting, is a thief in the night. In, uh, and, and look at the next slide. In which the heavens shall pass away. In the rapture, the heaven does not pass away. This happens after Jesus has come himself. He says, and the elements shall melt with fervent and eat. And the earth, also shall, the earth also and the works that therein shall be burnt up. Verse 11. This is what I'm going to. Seeing then that all this will happen, that this else will be burnt with fire. Hey, either it's Banana Island or the, or the flat in Manhattan. Oh, or the one on Fifth Avenue. Or the, or, or, or the beautiful houses in Santin City. He said, all this things will be burnt up. Oh, the Ferraris, the Aston Martins, it's all be burnt up. He says, seeing all this will be burnt up. He says, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? He says, if you know that this world is limited, what do you have to be? How do you have to think? What do you have to say? What's your life going to be like? Live today with eternity in mind. He says what? Looking. He says looking. He says looking for and hasting to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. How do I live? One, once I remember that that is his coming, I live with a different focus and value. Others are living to buy a car. Others are living to become the MD. That's not my only vision. I'm living to become a soul winner. I'm living to make an impact for God. I'm living to make God happy. I'm living to make my God's dream happen. That's my life. So I live with a different kind of vision and focus. Maybe you had the cost to migrate to another country. Thank God for the opportunity. Is it only the money you see in that country? Do you see the opportunity to win the souls? Or you've forgotten why God sent you there? If you're a Christian that thinks of eternity, you will live with a different focus. You will live with a different value. Sometimes something happens in church and two leaders fight and some say, I'm tired. I'm so I'm just going to go quiet. Listen, are you in that place because of hell? We'll live with a different focus, with a different vision. Our values are different. What are our value? God first. Some people, the only thing that moves them is money. Some others... What moves them is what their partner wants. But that's not a Christian life. The Christian understands that what moves me is God first. What does God want? What does God want? What's God's will? God's God's plan. That's my desire. I know what does God want. He must increase and I must decrease. Seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those other things will be added to you. The second thing is this. The value of God first in my decisions, in my money, when you get your salary, do you put God first? In my time, 
Do you use your energy to serve God or to serve yourself? Glory to God. When you put God first, something will happen to you. It's called consecration. What's consecration? Consecration is simply this. It's not about me, it's about him. So, anywhere leads my goal. Anywhere leads my goal. That's what consecration is. And that's the life that God wants from you. Not about you, about him. Anywhere leads my goal. The second thing is this. You not only will you have a different focus and value, you will be expectant of his return. People that are expecting his return, listen to me. The lifestyle is different. I don't know if you've been to London before, but when you go through those trains in London, you will see people running because they know what time the train will get there or the bus will get there. And they don't want to miss the bus. There's a way you'll be running because you're expectant of something. You are running. You are running. You are running. As a cell leader, there's so much you have to do. You want to join the department. You want to win a soul. You want to sponsor the gospel. You want to give the first 10 million. You want to do this and do that because you are running. Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. The third thing is this. The Bible says you'll be diligent. That means anywhere you're serving, whatever you're doing, you want to produce results for Christ. Look at this next level prayer. How many have been invited? How many have been invited this morning to watch the service with you? How many have you shared the word of God with today? Diligent in service. Maybe you're serving one unit or the other. I'm diligent there. Why am I diligent there? Because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. The latter part of that chapter says, spotless. What does spotless this? I'm not contaminated. There are some people you will listen to and they will contaminate you. They will contaminate your faith. They will contaminate your thinking. They will make you look stupid. Want to extract your faith. Refuse to associate with them again. I refuse to be contaminated. I refuse to be in discussion when my faith is weakened. I refuse to be in discussion that makes me lose track of eternity. That makes me lose track of heaven. I've set my hands upon the plow. There is no looking back. I've set my hands upon the plow. There is no looking back. I'm not going to subject myself to any influence that will contaminate me with the thinking of this world. All I want to do is to live for Jesus. That's all I want to do. Oh, I sing the song of the Ah, I am glad I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to myself. I belong to Jesus. Every day is about Jesus. As you evaluate your life, the good thing is this. No matter how far you've gone away from his will, today you can be restored. Today you can be restored. Let's pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Oh, glory to God. I want to pray. Rabbi Hassat, I want you to pray. Oh, glory to God. And tell God, I'm coming back. I want to live with eternity consciousness. Go ahead and pray anywhere you are. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And after the service, what does someone again and again and again? Fall to your friends. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, ah, this work can be distracting. Like Lot's wife, many of us have looked back and become stuck. But thank God for the call today to live a life without regrets. Help us change our perspective and values. Help us renew our mind. Ah, Spirit of God, do a work of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, after this message, I want to tell you something. Get a friend, get your wife, get your husband. Let's, let's, let's spend some time to pray. And this prayer is not for a need. So to say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. Then tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m., you'll get all your friends as an evangelist to join in the next level prayer. You'll start thinking, what's my next step? Is it Bible study? Should I send a mail? Should you give my life to Christ? If you're not born again, this is a great time to get born again. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your message today. I know I've gone far. I believe the message that Jesus died for me. He was raised from the death of my justification. And today, I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have lost focus, you've stopped serving, you've stopped living for Christ, get back to it. There's another chance for you. Jesus is coming soon. He may even come before 2020 is over. We don't know. But don't be surprised. He can come.